Please welcome Ryan. Hi, everybody. I'm going to switch things up a lot. All right. So uh, I didn't realize I'd be giving a talk today. So this is what you're getting. So uh, I have a content warning before I begin. Uh, I'm going to say mean things about digital property, advertising, and billionaires. Uh, there's also going to be a lot of hand waving. Um, so, <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, my life was really changed because I was in the top of the World Trade Center a month before 9-11 and then I got laid off shortly thereafter and I needed to figure out what to do with my life. Uh, and uh, being a person in the tech industry, I wanted to focus on like the things I was good at. Uh, so I went to Thailand and I lived there for a year and a half and tried to figure out what to do with my life. And so one of the things I did there was this conceptual art piece and I'm gonna talk to you about that today. Uh, so I call this the Netafesto. And so I really tried to look at um, what was important uh, to me and what sort of lever I could use to make change in the world. So three questions really like got me going, which is who decides what gets made who gets to make it, and who gets access to what's been made. So those three things really informed all my thinking. And so <laughs> at the end of all that, I came out of it uh, as uh, that we should get rid of copyright, intellectual property, advertising, and make everything open source. Those are my answers because once you start doing that, the answer to all those questions, who gets to decide what gets made? Everyone. Who gets to make it? Anyone and who gets access to it? Everyone. Those are the answers that I feel comfortable with. And I hope you will feel comfortable with only those answers by the end of this talk. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's talk about digital stuff a little bit very quickly because even as a tech person, I keep forgetting that like literally the only thing you can do with digital stuff is copy it. If you wanna move digital stuff, you have to make a copy and then delete the original, and actually that's like so wasteful, we don't even bother deleting it. We just mark it that other stuff can be like put there in its place. So we need to recognize and take advantage and exploit, if we really wanna be wealthy, really rich, we have to exploit digital for its like fundamental properties, which is it's super easy to copy. So any economy, economy that you're basing digital economies on must take advantage of the copying nature of digital. So. Uh, one of the things that that leads to is freely giving uh, access to all these copies. Uh, that's another thing that's great with digital. Four guys in Sweden have proven that it's financially possible to give all of the digital things to all the people in the world at a reasonable price. Uh, we could turn all of our libraries into our pirate bays. Uh, so. Why did we go so wrong? Why didn't it turn out like this? Why, why didn't we like naturally take advantage of all these digital properties? Because people were very confused when we were making this transition. So, and to, to illustrate how badly confused we got as a culture, uh, people like Bill Gates and Steve Jobs are seen as heroes instead of tragic figures that are sort of similar to King Midas, right? Like everything they touched the gold, everything those guys touched turned to proprietary software. And that is terrible for all of us. That made all of us way less wealthy. These, and it's a, it's a terrible mistake that they made. They could have gone down in history as like the digital Gandhis and be remembered for thousands of years. Instead, they will just be like forgotten and only be remembered by historians as the robber barons of our age. It's a terrible mistake they made. So you can feel sad for them. You shouldn't think of them as heroes. So. The real problem once we figure out how to use digital stuff is how do we get people, made, people paid to make stuff, to make new stuff? And so that was what my concept art was about, is figuring out how do we build a system to get people paid to make new digital art or digital creations. So one of the interesting ideas, so you're, you're familiar with lots of these technologies that now exist that could kind of make this happen, you know, uh, with blockchain and ledgers and cryptocurrencies. Uh, on the side of like, how do we get people a livable wage to make stuff? We have things like Kickstarter and Patreon, which are like, well, they're okay, they're a great start. 
Uh, but what I want to talk about a little bit is on the other side, which is voluntary payments for digital work that's already been made. Because what's important is to create incentive uh, and equity of economics for people who are making this stuff. How do you do that? Here's an idea, is that you let the payers decide how their payments get distributed. So one of the really nice properties of digital is that you can literally record all of the process of how that digital thing was made. Software engineers use open source, we have all the code, but we can push this into every digital tool, can literally record every key press, every mouse click, so we can replay the entire history of something digital that was made. Then we can take our algorithms, whether it's AI or any other system, and take a look at that contribution history. And the person who's paying $5 voluntarily for a movie that they got for free can have their own personal algorithm that they think is equitable, distributing their $5 amongst all the people who contributed to that movie. And the people who contributed to that movie or digital whatever it is, they don't have to ask permission so that you can take any, like in open source, you can make any contribution you want to anything you want. And every time you make a contribution, a little bit of money might start flowing back to you. And it's up to the payers. There's no contracts. It's an ad hoc collaboration with very little friction for getting involved. And all you know, all it feels like is the more you get involved, the more the money starts flowing to you. And there is no central authority. There is no central truth of like, oh, this is the equitable way to pay people. No, I get to choose. If I want to pay in my socialist way, then I can pay with my socialist AI and have it distribute the money I want. Or you can believe in the, the union or the, you know, the movie studio's uh, algorithm for how they think you should be paying. But you need to be the payers and need to be able to choose. So why would people pay? Well, because I think we have a collective sense of responsibility for creating equity in remuneration. Sure, there'll be lots of free riders, but that's okay. We can reduce this by having reputation. So one of the nice things that we don't have in our society right now is we have like patrons of the arts being very rich people. What we should actually have is patrons of the arts being how much of the percentage of your income goes towards supporting creators. And in a system like this, this is where we can say, ah, um, I can provably say that I spend 10% of my money uh, supporting creators. So just to leave you with a last uh, couple ideas is think about carefully who gets to decide what gets made, who gets to make it, who gets access to it, Make sure that you're using an ad blocker. Make sure your friends are using an ad blocker. We need to create a revolution where we're forcing the business model away from advertising, which has totally co-opted all cultural funding in the 20th century, one of the greatest mistakes that we've made, and force a new funding model for cultural production. And the best way to start doing that is making sure everybody is blocking ads. Thank you very much. We have time for a couple of questions. Oh. <laughs> you can take them sitting down. It's been a long, it's been a long weekend. Um, yeah. So I have sort of a tricky question, which is I have projects that I've poured hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of hours of my life into that have thousands of users and lots of issues get opened and I spend you know, many hours a month working on this basically for free and I have four Patreon supporters and I get 30 bucks a month for this. What's, what incentive is gonna actually convince all of those people without a network effect where this reputation starts mattering? How do you, get the, how do you bootstrap that process where everyone starts feeling compelled to, to actually give a significant portion? Yeah, that's a great question. So the, the hand wavy answer is that uh, cultural, cultural norms have to change, right? So like the, part of the ad blocking is like to deny the money to one sort of funding model so that like there's some movement towards another funding model. But the other side of it is that I think you can, you know, by pushing a lot of the intelligence of the funding into algorithms rather than people. So like the, the simple model is that you say like, I don't want to think about how I'm funding. I'm just going to spend like $100 a month funding creators. 
and then the algorithms of smartness are taking a look at like what you're actually interacting with what you're using and start distributing the money fairly and equitably. And that algorithm can be asking you and saying like, well, what do you think is fair? But like the, the hard work of distributing it all is done by the machines. But I think the money has to be there for it to be machine. Absolutely, absolutely. So, but then that's where the reputation gets a lot easier if you're saying like, oh, like I'm a good patron because I'm, I'm spending 5% of my income and that's, that's the reputation, yeah. <laughs> and I see another question over here. It's like a half question, and it's kind of hand wavy in itself. Is this not almost Spotify for everything? Sorry, am I wrong? Yes, except the really important thing is that the payers need to have a diverse set of what they consider equitable and fair payment schemes. Right, like any sort of centralized decision making on like what's fair is a disaster, right? So like every person who's paying needs to feel like they're paying their way fairly. And like on average, that's where we start getting like a, an approximation to, to equity. I think we'll thank you again and move on to our final lightning talk.